And we know the NTSB chair went before and testified before a U.S. Senate committee today. We know they believe that the crash of the actual cargo ship hitting the key bridge could have been possibly uh, tied into the electrical issues on the ship. We know reportedly lost power. The NTSB chair now requesting assistance to examine the circuit breakers on that ship. We also heard from the Unified Command today who tells us that they are still on track to have the Port of Baltimore permanently reopened by the end of May. We have a massive amount of wreckage. We call it a wreckage field or a debris field right in the middle. Giving a deeper look at what lies at the bottom of the Patapsco River, a roughly 1,500 ton piece of the key bridge that's partially embedded in the mud line. Colonel Pachison with the Army Corps of Engineers says they're planning to cut the piece into two. In this section here, they've actually created a gap by creating a hole in order to lower a bucket to be able to dig out the roadway and the debris that's laying on top of the bottom part of this truss. Now, while this work is happening around the clock, crews are still removing containers on the Dolly ship. The governor says they are aiming to remove 178 containers total to gain access to the bridge pieces lying on top of the ship before refloating it. So far, they've removed at least 34 containers. That work is complicated and that work is dangerous because just one empty vessel just one empty container that's sitting on the vessel can have a weight of over one and a half tons. That's 3,000 pounds. The governor also adding that they're still continuing to see more movement of smaller sized ships through the two temporary channels. As of this morning, there had been 58 commercial movements throughout those two channels. But let's be clear, even with those 58 movements, we're still only talking about 15% of what vessel traffic looked like before the collapse. Baltimore City Mayor Brandon Scott also releasing an action plan today, a new one uh, saying that anyone who is impacted by the port closure could qualify for utility bill or rental assistance. We have all of that information, including those links over on WBALTV.com. Live tonight from Dundalk, Tori Yorgi, WBALTV 11 News.